cultural melting pot, and with a population of 16 million, it is the largest metropolis on the African continent. The Egyptian people refer to their capital city as Umm al Dunya, Mother of the World. Here, both past and present blend together as one. The Alabaster Mosque dates back to the 19th century. Its external appearance is very similar to that of Osmanic architecture. The famous monumental building in Istanbul, the Hagia Sophia, served as the model for this impressive building. In 1517, the Turks conquered Cairo and thus brought about a violent end to the Mamluks dynasties that had reigned supreme for more than two centuries. Shortly after this, the city became less influential. However, from 1805, Mohammed Ali, who is regarded as one of modern Egypt's founding fathers, gave this metropolis a new luster. His mosque is located on the site of an ancient fortification, the Citadel, the only natural hill between the Nile and the Mokata Mountains. In 1830, construction work on this splendid building began under the supervision of Greek architect Yusuf Bushnak. It is within this mosque that Ottoman design is at its most impressive. The ceiling and cupola are architectural masterpieces. A total of 365 original oil lamps illuminate the magnificent prayer hall. Although now supplied by electricity, the solemn atmosphere has been faithfully retained. The history of the St. Sergius Church dates back to Abu Serga in the 5th century AD. Legend has it that the church was built on the site where the Holy Family once sought refuge. Thus, the richly decorated church is a popular Christian place of pilgrimage. It is situated in Fustat, in the middle of Coptic, the oldest district in Cairo. Ivory and ebony carvings decorate the walls of this outstandingly well-preserved church, which is dedicated to the Roman martyrs Sergius and Wacus. The spacious Mameluk's necropolis is unique within the Islamic world. Here, instead of conventional graves, entire houses were built for the dead. Within the necropolis, which also accommodates those of humble means, 
the mosques and mausoleums of the Mameluk sovereigns are particularly interesting. Built in 1900, each day the Egypt Museum attracts thousands of visitors who come to experience for themselves the legendary treasures of ancient history. In 1857, the French antiquity scientist Auguste Mariette founded what still remains to this day the world's greatest and most important collection of ancient Egyptian art. This impressive museum contains more than 120,000 different objects from approximately 4,500 years of Egyptian history. Because the belief in life after death played a highly important role in the religion of the ancient Egyptians, the tombs of the dead pharaohs were adorned with beautiful objects. The vast wealth of ancient Egypt's royal families and dynasties is clearly visible in the magnificent and abundant use of gold. The museum contains work from all the great cultural epochs of Egypt, from the Three Kingdoms to Ptolemaic Roman times. The unique treasures of Tutankhamun are without a doubt among the museum's most treasured exhibits. Discovered in 1922, these exhibits cover a large area of the museum. Howard Carter's discovery was that of an almost perfectly preserved tomb. Indeed, the museum is not large enough to accommodate all of Carter's amazing discoveries. Fascination in the legendary discoveries of the Valley of the Kings is just as strong today as it has always been. Thus, there are plans for a new and larger building. The lifelike portrayal of the statues is due to the ancient Egyptians' belief of life after death. Only the exact image of the dead could guarantee eternal life. Dunya, mother of the world, Cairo really does strive to do justice to its name. After all, this city has united the glory of the pharaohs with the early Christian and Islamic worlds.